Hello, welcome to the second episode of the buy request series, and this is actually part two of building the framework. In case you missed part one, this is the series where I intend to answer your questions by producing tutorial videos specifically for the questions you've asked. But to begin, I'm spending three parts of the series creating a framework that I'll then use later to build expert advisors in answer to your questions. If you haven't seen part one, then I recommend you go and watch it. I'll put a link on the screen and in the description to that part. I won't be going over that uh, information again today, so you may be a little lost if you haven't seen part one already. What we covered in part one was the basics of creating an expert advisor and the basic structure of the expert and how it runs. Today, I'm going to be creating the signaling for entry and exit of trades. Before I get into the actual code, I thought I'd explain something of the philosophy that I have in this framework. There are quite a lot of approaches where a single large piece of code would be built and that code would be broken up into sections to deal with entering trades, exiting trades, managing money, and so on. And then you would set a number of variables or parameters to create junctions and loops within that code. That creates a rather complex type of code uh, that's difficult to manage and follow. And it's not what I would truly call a framework. It would be something similar to an old style telephone switchboard. Everything you need is there. You just have to put the wires in the right place, but you do wind up with a jumble that's difficult to understand and manage. I'm looking for something simpler and more modern than that. So, Within an expert advisor, there are two key sections. There's the initialization and the on D in it, uh, where the expert is set up and then shut down at the end. And in the middle of that, you have various loops, typically the on tick. There could be on timer or certain other things, but these happen on events. So these are event handlers. What I want to do rather than code everything inside a single expert advisor program for that loop is then provide a framework where you can plug in pieces that will do the work for you. So these, and as we'll see today, would include the entry signals and the exit signals and the trade handler. And in fact, those pieces that you plug in could themselves be made up of other plug-in pieces. So this is the framework I'm creating and it's well suited to an object-oriented approach. You can think of it like putting together a train. You don't have just one train that has everything if you want to set up a train, you put in the carriages that you need for that train. And if you then need a train to work differently, you would create another train and put together the carriages you need for that. So this is what we're trying to create. And now let's go to the code and start extending the framework to build in the entry and exit signals. In part one, I created the two expert advisor templates. These called the expert class. The expert class, I created the frameworks folder to hold all of the framework versions, the framework 1.0 version folder, and then the expert base class. And that inherits from the common base class. And then there is the framework 1.0 include file that pulls all of these together. So there's a single line inside the expert advisors to import those. And inside the expert base class, I left placeholders for the signals. So today I'm going to create the signal base class that can be used to fill in these placeholders. First, I'm going to create a subfolder underneath the framework 1.0 folder. I'm just going to create one here called signals. And now I'm going to create a signal base file inside here. First, I know that I want to inherit from the common base class. So I'll just put an include statement in here. And remembering that I want to keep everything for the framework inside the framework 1.0 folder. So I'm using relative addressing here with the quoted include rather than the angle brackets. That way I don't need to know where the framework 1.0 folder is. I just need to know that the signal base class is one level below the common base. And next, the signals can, inc can indicate opening or closing trades. And the signals can really only be one of four types in most cases. That would be a signal for a buy, for a sell, for none, or for everything. 
So I'm just going to create an enum that I can use for those. So here's my enum, OFX signal direction. And I can use the same enum to indicate the direction that I want to open trades or the direction that I want to close trades. And so I'm going to be using just the signal base to handle both opening and closing signals. So here I've got signal none and I've actually specified the values of these. Uh, you can set up an enum without specifying values, but I've done this because I can later use Boolean logic to determine whether buy and sell are both true. Um, if I had simply entered these without those values, then these are the same values they would have anyway. I just want to make sure that that doesn't change if I rearrange these in any time. So the four signals I have, none, buy, sell, and both. So now I create the signal base class. So just class C signal base. I'm in public inheriting from C common base and then closing out my class definition here. So let's fill in the details. So first, I'm going to create two member variables, entry signal and exit signal, and they're of the type enum signal direction here. And my intent is that there'll be an update process within this class that sets the values for these. And then when the container wants to get these values, I simply return the value that's already been stored after the update, other than recalculate every time. Next are the constructors. I'm having a default constructor with no arguments, and that's simply going to call the default constructor for C common base. And if you remember C common base, this will just set the two variables of symbol and time frame to be the current chart symbol and time frame. And then I call the init method of the base class or the signal base class. There's also an override in case you've written an expert advisor that runs on a different symbol and or time frame, uh, where you can pass in both the symbol and the time frame. And in that case, I'm just calling C common base, which also has an initialization method of that takes symbol and time frame. The destructor for the base class has nothing. So there's just the two brackets there to close that out. And then this is the initialization method that I'm going to use, or the definition of the initialization method within the C signal base class. And then I have three public methods. I've declared all of these as virtual so that if when I create the child classes inheriting from C signal base, they can implement any of these that they need. The first, as I mentioned, I have an update signal, which will recalculate the values of the two member variables. And in the base class, this just returns, does nothing. So it's up to each of the child classes to implement that to create some kind of update. And then the two methods, entry signal and exit signal, are just returning the values of those two member variables. And I expect that in a lot of cases, the child classes don't need to override those. Uh, they would simply re rely on this base class to return the values. And then I have only one method here that has an actual implementation, and that is the init method. So this is the one that's called from the constructors. This test you'll find in most classes. I'm checking to see that the initialization of the parent class, which in this case is the C common base, I'm checking to see that that was successful. If not, it should have set init result to be something other than init succeeded. So if init result is not init succeeded, then I'm simply returning the value of init result and not taking the initialization of this class any further. And then all I'm doing in the initialization is setting the two entry and exit signals to signal none as an initialization, and then return in it succeeded. And that's the entirety of the signal base class. I'm also going to create inside the signals folder an all signals include file. So I'll just do that and then take you through what it's for. Now this is the all signals file at the moment. It has one include statement so far, which is to include the signal base file. And then as I add more signals that implement signal base and inherit from it, I'll add the include files for those at the bottom here. That way the framework only needs to include this one all signals file and that will then make all of the signal classes available to the containing expert advisor. So this will also need maintenance as I add more and more signals. 
Now that I've added the signal base class, I need to update my framework include file. So let's open that. It currently includes the common base, the expert base, and now I'm going to include the signal base. Now I've included the signal base by adding in the all signals. That way all of the signals will be available, as I just described with the all signals include file. And I've included it before the expert base because expert base I'm about to modify and it will want references to the signal base class. Now I need to update the expert base class so that it can use the signals. Here's the expert base. We go to the top. First thing I'm going to do is include the signal base class. And again, because I'm keeping everything relative referenced, I'm just referencing this as signals slash signal base. And now, as I mentioned, this framework is made up by assembling pieces at runtime. So rather than store the values for a signal, as in the moving average period and so on, I'm going to store the signals as objects. So I'm going to create two member variables here, one for the entry signal and one for the exit signal. And now I want methods to assign those so that the expert advisor can assign these two signals to the expert object. So here I've just created two virtual methods, virtual so that if I create a child class of the expert base, then I can override these. But I've got add entry signal, which takes a type of C signal base pointer, and add exit signal. And that will simply assign that value to those two member variables. And now in the loop main function, as I said, the signals need to have the update method called in order to recalculate their values. So let me add some code here. First, I'm checking that the entry signal is not null, so it has been set. And if it is not null, then I'm going to call the update signal method from that entry signal. Next, I'm going to check to see if the entry signal and the exit signal object are the same. So you might easily have a single signal that handles both entry and exit. Um, and there's no point in calling the update method twice. So if they are different, not equal, and if the exit signal has been set, so it's not null, then I'm going to also call the update signal method of the exit signal. So once I've done that, the entry and the exit signal both have their internal values set and I can request from them the entry and exit flags. Now I'll fill in the close trade logic, which means I'm going to be asking for the exit flags from the exit signal. So I'm also testing here if the exit signal is not equal to null. And then I test the exit signal result. And if the signal is returning both, then I'm going to close all. Now, so far I haven't implemented the trading methods, so this is still just a placeholder comment. But if I get a signal to close both, then I will close all trades. If I get a signal to close buy, then I'll close the buy trades. And if I get a signal to close sell, then I'll close the sell trades. And then the opening signals, almost the same as the byte, but here I'm testing the entry signal object. So if the entry signal is not null, as in this has been set by the calling program, then I query the entry signal method. And as before, both means I open both sides. Buy, I open a buy trade and sell, I will open a sell trade. And that's all that's needed in changing the expert base class. The final change I'm going to make today is in the EA template. I'll change both the MQ4 and the MQ5 copies. As I described, the intent of the framework is to add pieces together and assemble the expert. So down here, we have an expert object. We've created that. We've set the trading volume, the trade comment, and the magic number. And I've got a comment here that says set up the signals. The EA already has an include statement to include the entire framework, so it has access to the signal base and any further signals that I create. So first I'm going to create two variables on the global context to hold the signals. So I'm declaring C signal base type pointer entry signal and exit signal. And I'm declaring these on the global context because I will need to create them in the init section and delete them in the dinit section. So next I will actually create these signals. 
And at the moment, because I haven't created any child implementations of the signal base, I'm just going to create a new C signal base, which you'll remember the update method on this does nothing, but it is still fully functional. And I'm creating both of these by calling new C signal base. So although it's the same class and being initialized with the same values, they will actually be different variables. In some cases, I might simply create the first, say the entry signal, and then if I'm using the same signal for both entry and exit signals, I could replace this just with entry signal equals, or just with exit signal equals entry signal. Or I could do away with exit signal altogether and just pass entry signal twice. So we need to pass these both into the expert class, or into the expert object. I'll do that here. I'm calling the add entry signal method, passing the entry signal, and the add exit signal passing in the entry exit signal object. And as I just mentioned, if they were the same, I could just pass entry signal into both of these methods. And then because I've created two additional objects, I need to delete those when the application finishes. So I just delete exit signal and delete entry signal. And there are no further changes required here. In the MQ5 template, I'm doing exactly the same things. There's nothing different between the MQ4 and MQ5 implementation for this. And I'll just compile these to make sure I haven't made any typing mistakes. No errors there and on the MQ4, no errors. So as I was describing, I'm piecing this together. When we get to the first implementation of an actual problem, which is in episode four, I'll be replacing this C signal base with an actual signal class that, uh, that manages a strategy. And then you'll see that I'm piecing together the strategy and adding it into the expert then for handling. So now we've added signals or the signal base into the framework. Next episode, I will cover adding the trade handling so that the expert base, we can fill in these close and open placeholders with actual trading. And that will be the end then of creating the framework for the basic framework, which we'll then use in the following episode to create the first expert advisor and the first by request question that I am going to be answering uh, fits well because it's a standard moving average cross, which is good to explain how to use this framework uh, while not introducing a very complex method. So I hope these are being useful to you. The code for this framework is available to download. I've updated it from the last episode already, so it now includes all of the new code we've just added today. If you are finding these useful, please leave a like. And if you want to see more of these, then remember to hit the subscribe and the bell icon to be notified when we release more of these videos. So until next time, thank you for watching.